Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover, I am Penj and welcome back to the Guild 3 where we rejoin the Covered household, but it is sad times at the Covered bedsit just here, a little farmhouse that all the Covered family did wouldn't share, they're in mourning because last time of course we saw the passing of Bernard Covered. Our erstwhile hero is no more, he died, he got the plague and he died. He couldn't quite make it back to a little apothecary healer type person and he died of the plague which was all very very tragic. So that leaves behind of course Kirsten Covered and their daughter Tamara Covered. So Kirsten and Tamara find themselves on their own and I was thinking about this. Does this raise some questions about the longevity of the Covered dynasty? Because let's say Kirsten, she doesn't want to be on her own. She does not want to spend the rest of her time on her own. She She's going to go out and find love again because she's a widow. She's a grieving widow. She needs somebody to, you know, make sure that she's okay and look after her. So she might go and marry someone else. That's so she goes and marries, I don't know, Bob Banana. <laughs> then would then she become Kirsten Banana? And then would then Tamara get renamed to, uh, that would be brilliant, Tamara Banana would be amazing. But would we then have the Banana Dynasty or whatever surname of the person that Kirsten marries? Would then that become our dynasty name? Or would, would whoever Tamara, no not Tamara, Kirsten, Justin marries adopt the surname Cupboard. I do not know, but I think that's something we need to explore. And of course, we have a choice of what to do with our people right now. Tamara could go to school. That was what we sort of established last time. If we look down here, one of the options she's got is that we can send her to school. It is quite expensive. It is 5,000 money, but it looks like a very, very good thing to do. They'll go away, they'll get an education, they'll receive experience points and a permanent improvement in a random primary attribute. So that is very good. However, we could use that almost 4,000 gold to start improving things here. We could become a yeoman or our family could, our dynasty could become yeomans and that unlocks all these exciting things or it pushes us nearer to these. Anyway, what do we need to become a butcher? A resident. So we need to go down a resident and that is a yeoman. So if we unlocked yeoman, we could go down the miller route. We could start doing some milling. So it's a tricky thing to do. It's a tricky situation we find ourselves in. Of course, without Bernard, we're all a little bit lost. It's all a little bit sad. The first thing we're going to do, however, the first thing we are going to do right now is get Kirsten to go over to the market and get herself a weapon because somebody did point out that we might want to go and invest in some sort of defense because there's quite a lot of troublemakers around here. There's one just there. There's Caitlin the robber just there. So let's go and get Kirsten to run over to the market and go and get yourself a weapon. Go and try and defend yourself. So if another robber does come by, you can at least whack them in the head with something. Maybe you can do a bit of stabby stabby with a little dagger or whack them with a mace or something. So let's see what's available. Let's go and see what's available. Also, because yeah, we, we've got a little bit of money. We've got a tiny bit of money. It might be quite a nice idea to maybe get some better clothes. We will see. Let's see what there is at the market for Kirsten. Right, ramp time right back down to slow-mo. Let's have a look. Uh, she doesn't need anything as extravagant as a long sword. I don't think that's what we need. I think we just need something a little bit more... Yeah, there you go, a dagger. A dagger would do the job, wouldn't it? Um, and that's also very affordable. A mace is quite expensive. A handgun? <laughs> I mean, that would work. Oh my goodness me. But um, I think a dagger, just something, some means of defence would be a sensible idea. So let's go to there. Uh, we don't want 40. Let's just buy one dagger for 84 of our monies. Okay, so we've got that. And now I think, can we equip that on her? Maybe we can't do that quite yet. Maybe we can't do that in this particular screen. But whatever the case, there is... Oh, no, there you go. A dagger. The dagger is now equipped into the weapon slot. And then can we buy some better clothes? What are we in now? Free citizen's garb. I mean, could we sell that and get something a bit nicer? Can we get something slightly more fancy? The garb of arrogance? Oh, that sounds very exciting. I mean, that's actually not too bad. That actually isn't too bad. It gives you plus 10 armour plus three resistance, it doesn't say exactly what to, and plus eight bonus when bargaining. Oh, oh no, absolutely, keep that on. Kirsten, you can keep that. Maybe you could buy yourself a lovely little exciting extra. In fact, no, let's not buy an extra because we'll probably get mugged and they'll steal it off us. <laughs> so we could buy like a little a little ring to remember Bernard by. Um, do you know what? That might be quite nice. 
That might be quite nice. A little bit of a reputation bonus as well. I quite like that idea. Let's do that. Let's buy one of those, please. Confirm. So we spend a little bit of money. And where does that go? On your hand, one assumes. There we go. So you've got yourself some clothes. You've got a, a wooden ring, which is a bit weird. I'll give you that. But okay, you know, it's fine in memory of Bernard. And you've got yourself a dagger. Okay, that's good. I like the fact that we've got this. We've got a bit of attack power, a bit of damage, a bit of defense, and some reputation bonus. That helps. Right, let's go back to here. Let's so pop back to the bed sit. Now, the other thing is, as well, thinking about Tamara going to school. How old is Tamara now? Seven. Now, each day in this, uh, in this world is actually four years in the lifetime of our characters here. Because it goes by quite quickly indeed. So, really... This day is coming to an end. It's not long until they go. Look how all the work people are going to finish because it got to 10 o'clock in this day. So soon, another four years are going to go by and Tamara is going to be 11 years old. Will we have time to send her to school? I do not know. I don't think we will. I'm not entirely sure we will. Right, let's pop into here. Let's get uh, Kirsten to go and boast about our achievement, shall we? Let's get her to just run around and start showing off and stuff. That would be nice. Um, and you're running off to get your wounds healed. Um, no, don't do that, because it's really far away. Stop that and do this. Go and do some boasting, please. There we go. <laughs> go and do that. So yeah, I assume she then went, I'm a bit injured. I'd like to go and heal up, please. You'll heal up. It's fine. You've got ages. You'll have four years to heal up. It's all okay, Kirsten. So now you're going to run around and and yell about how great you are. No, you're going to run around and get your wounds healed again. <laughs> okay. So you're going to run all that way to get your wounds healed and then come all the way back again. Okay, fine. You clearly, that is what you want to do. That is clearly your driving force. And whatever I tell you to do, you're not going to do it. Okay, fine. Um, I don't think we've got much else to do. Let's check on our farmstead, our little sort of croft. How is that going? We've got ourselves, we've got loads of water, which is good. We've not got that much wheat now. We've not got that much wheat. How about we stop Baldwin <laughs> from jumping into the well and we get Baldwin to work on some wheat? That might be a fun thing. So firstly, Baldwin has got to actually come home. So Baldwin, there's Baldwin. There you go, running back from the well. So you've got some water. I imagine you'll put some water into the storage area. Da da. And then Baldwin, work on wheat, please. Because we've only got 25 wheat. Oh, and summer. It's summer 1420. And our dynasty grow, oh, grow, grows in age, certainly. Oh, and a tiny bit of lag there. Uh, it looks very lovely over London. The dark skies. Red sky in the morning. Shepherd's warning. Right, let's have a look. Uh, the leader of another dynasty has died. The leader of two of the dynasties has died. Andrew Barclay, who is the leader of the dynasty. Barclay, you never say, has died. And also Gilbert Mercer has died. Oh my goodness me. We have dead people. And there's a little kind of gathering of folks here. Uh, who are you? What are you lot doing here? Why are you stood around outside my bit? Okay, I don't really like that. Oh, someone's leveled up. Level two? Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, sorry, I, I, Thomas, I didn't see you here. Yes, Thomas was the new person we added. Um, let's give Thomas a point of strength as well. A point of strength, you're all farmers. Strength is a good thing to have. Okay, right. Let's check tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is 10. Ah, okay, so she's only going up a little bit. We haven't got enough money to send her away right now. Um, I think we might. Now, where's where where are you? Where's Kirsten? Where? Oh, hang on a minute. Whereabouts are you in the world? Oh, you've still <laughs> four years have passed and you've still not made it to London. Okay, fine. Uh, do you know what? Let's just put it on super fast speed. Kirsten is determined to go to London. By the way, you're going to the place where your husband caught the plague. So yeah. Be a little bit wary, will you? <laughs> Don't go near anybody that looks a little bit unwell. If somebody sneezes near you, run away. Also, don't get mugged, please, because there's baddies. There's baddies all over the place. Um, right, money is looking okay. Yeah, look at that. A nice 200 there. That was very welcome. Um, okay, so now I assume that she's coming home again. I assume she's coming home. Right, Tamara. Tamara, what can you actually do? Can you do anything in here? Um, can you make some flannels tomorrow? Is that something you can do? No, see, look, she can't do anything. <laughs> she can't. She can't do anything at all. Okay, fine. So she's too young for that. We are racking up the money though. Four thousand one hundred thirty-one and counting. Let's take a look in here. Yeah, we've got ourselves a nice supply of wheat. We've got what one hundred and fifty odd water. We've got fifty-eight wheat. 
A little bit more wheat coming in as well. So this is good. This is encouraging. We've got some more cows. Okay, 13 cows in storage. How about let's adjust the wheaty and cows market route to have two cows. Let's do you know what? Let's go, let's go mad and have and a two might be quite good because we don't generate them that quick. So save that, confirm that. So they should start taking two cows away now. So if we just absolutely speed time on. Let's see what happens. So we should see our little person running back in at some point there. So she will grab some stuff. 4,301. We run through to here. 4,713. Oh, my word. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, hang on. What's happening? Oh, no, that's not us. <laughs> I thought that was us. No, there is uh, Sabrina. 31, the Miller. She's got the flu and she's been knocked out by some baddies. It's it's generally a bad day all round, Sabrina. I mean, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I don't like it when we run near to these obvious baddies. Why are the guards so useless? Who who pays these guards? Right, 4956. An employee has reached a new professional level. So, um, Farley who's 35. If Farley won't be around forever either. We wanted to get some new people in. Um, Farley, what shall we do with you? I mean, I don't really know whether we need any of these extra things. I think just strength. Just make you big and strong. Go on, Farley. There you go. <laughs> You've eaten your oats for breakfast and it's made you big and strong. So well done. We're nearly at 5,000 gold. I think what we will do is we will send somebody to school. What's she called again? Tomorrow. We will send Tamara to school. We've got 5,200. I'd rather just get another payment in so to make sure we've got a little bit extra at the end of it. So 5,430. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I think we send her to school. Um, we've not got any wheat. Oh, because of rat. Ah, right. We've got loads of wheat, but now we have no water. Okay, right. Baldwin, back you go to... <laughs> <laughs> to making, to grabbing water. We went through that water very quickly indeed. Ah, okay, right. So that's going to be a problem. We might see our money slow down a little bit. And, uh, okay, Tamara, Tamara, it's a big day for you. We're going to send you to school. We're going to send you to school. It gets us 9,000, uh, 9,900 XP, which sounds good. And also 250 reputation or influence even, because I imagine that's quite a good thing. They go, ah, yes, your your, your uh, child is an educated person because they've been to school. So let's send you off to whatever school you're going to go to, a London school. Let's do that. Oh, the, the London school, in fact, yes. Let's send you there. Confirm that. Yes. Let's go and send Tamara to school. Okay, so she's going to run off. We've spent the money. Hopefully she won't get mugged and beaten up on the way because she is our last bit of dynasty. Okay. Right, and then, um, Caitlin, you're, you're, you're Kirsten, sorry, you're fine. Stop doing that. And Kirsten, can you, whereabouts are you? Kirsten, come, come home, Kirsten. Wherever home might be, come home. Is it over here? Um, no, I don't think it is over there. It looks very nice over there, wherever that is. I'm very confused as to whereabouts we might be. Over here, here we go. Here's our little place. Right, so you come home, please. Come home. We've got some things that you need to do. So let's pop back home and you, you need to do some very important stuff to do with flannels and flowers. Although, to be fair, I don't know where we get wild roses from. And Bernard had all the flowers. Poor Bernard. Um, Maybe we can go and find some wild roses. Whereabouts would they be? I mean, do we have to buy it from the market? Maybe we have to buy it from the market. I think that might be what we have to do. But for now, we can't do anything. So so our daughter, Tamara, has gone to school and Kirsten is currently on the way back here. So there's nothing much to do, really, except just sort of sit and wait. Although we are earning an awful lot of the monies. 1,055. That is wonderful because we've got water again. We've got cows. We're selling the cows. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of an issue there with selling two cows because we've only got one. But again, yeah, money is looking pretty nice. I'm happy with that. Hello, Geraldine Newbolt. Who are you? What do you want? Why are you stood there? What, what, what Are you buying something from us? Or are you nicking something from us? I hope you're buying something from us. That bar is ticking up. 1283 up to 1244. Did you just fleece us? <laughs> are you a robber? Maybe they're baddie. Maybe they're a robber and they've come to, to nick stuff from us. I don't really know. Was that you? Geraldine Newbolt. You're 15. 
Yeah, I don't really know what happened there. That was a little bit strange, but right you are. Okay, right, where is where is everybody else? Let's try and find where Kirsten is. Uh, okay, she's making her way back. Don't go through the plague clouds. Stop going through the clouds of a plague. Oh, and it's raining as well. Marvellous. Right, let's speed time on. There's a horse. There's a horse in a field. Oh, yes, one day we shall have horses of our very own. But do you know what? It's going to take a little while. It's going to take a little while for our dynasty to recover from the loss of Bernard. But let's get Kirsten home and let's get her doing some of the very basic things that she needs to do in order to embark on a lovely bit of romance. And Kirsten has arrived home marvellous. So first things first, we've got some water, we've got some cloth. Let's go and make yourself some flannels. <laughs> so let's get some flannels done. So you can start working on those. We'll speed time on a bit. Maybe you only need, do you know what? We might as well just have three. We might as well just get you to use up the remaining things because there's no point. We might just have all the flannels we can get. So there we go. So now we can't make any more because we need some cloth. So I would say, right, stop doing that. So from the market, can we buy wild roses and cloth? Let's go and find out. Right, so you, Kirsten Cupboard, come here to the market, which is possibly still open. I'm not entirely sure. We'll find out when we get here. And if they tell us to clear off, then yes, obviously it won't be open. <laughs> we shall find out. Let's see. We're still selling here. So that's pretty good because that is our, um, that's our sort of transporter person. So the market's still sort of buying stuff. So, ah, marvellous. Okay, right, let's have a look what we need. So let's, uh, is it raw materials? Ah, wild rose. Yeah, we need a few of those. So let's get, we need some bunches of flowers. So let's go for four of those, possibly. That's not very expensive at all. That's fine. And then, can we buy cloth from here? Yes, we can. Marvellous. Right, okay, we don't need that much either. Let's just buy 10. Let's just stock up on 10 cloth. There we go. So we'll buy ourselves some cloth as well. Marvellous. So she's got those in her hands. Oh, look at the exciting things. So these are all things that you can make in the game. Obviously, we're going down the route of cattle and pigs and eventually riding horses and that kind of stuff. But if you'd have picked the sort of uh, craft trade from the farming trade. I think eventually if you go down woodworking and carpentry, yeah, you can make these and you can make hand carts and horse drawn carts. And then down here, if you go down a different route there, you can make yourself weapons, weapon poison. I imagine that sort of, yeah, apothecary too. So you can make different things. Bone talisman from a magician shop. Oh, that sounds great. Oh, I'm, I'm very tempted to buy a bone talisman. Ah, but you lose reputation because because you're wearing a, a bone talisman. Okay. The cap of invisibility. Yes. Oh, we want one of those. That means we might not get killed quite so much. But yeah, there's lots of lovely things. And yeah, all these you can make, which I, I really like in this game. All these things are things that if you have the right skills, your characters can actually manufacture. A metaphysical belt. What does that do? It gives you plus two strength. <laughs> nice. And a comb gives you plus one reputation, one percent reputation bonus. Okay, seems a bit obscure, but right you are, you have lovely combed hair. Okay, right, so Kirsten, get back home. And I suspect the day is going to end before she gets there. Maybe not. Maybe she'll just get there before the day ends. We might be okay. I don't quite know when the day ends. I think it is midnight. So there we go. So right, it'll roll into there. Time back down to normal. Right, Kirsten, make some bouquets of flowers, please, if you would be so kind. Um... Oh, hang on. No, hang on. We need to put the stuff into the house, don't we? We need to put the stuff into the house. There we go. Right, I've put the stuff in the house. Now you can make yourself some flowers. Because uh, this is a bit weird because we're kind of doing it backward from what we did before. So we're going to be presenting the gentleman with flowers, which is lovely. It's a lovely gesture. And that should be absolutely fine. So we've got ourselves some bouquets of flowers. So let's put that in Kirsten's inventory. Two of those. Um, and the hour is a bit late. The hour is a bit late. We might need to run time on. The only thing is, she's 33 now. I mean, if we run this on to the end of the day, she's going to be 37. Also, Tamara might be around, what, 14, 15? She might actually come back from school. I don't know when that stops. When does when does school stop? At a certain age, one assumes? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there's someone doing something very weird outside of our place. <laughs> Are you a robber? You're a robber standing outside our house. Maybe you could clear off, my good sir. It's autumn in the year 1424. This person has just collapsed. <laughs> oh dear, are you okay? <laughs> Do you need some help? 
Oh dear, that's not good. Um, the leader of another dynasty has died. Okay, right, so Gabriel Bannister. And um, a dynasty has been destroyed. The New Bolt dynasty is destroyed. The last members of its last household are leaving the area forever. Oh dear. Right, so the dynasty has gone. Oh my goodness me. Okay, fine. That's that's quite big. That's quite big news. Tamara is now 14. She's still at school. I don't know when that finishes, but okay. However, you now, you can begin your quest, Kirsten Cupboard, because we are going to go down here and we are going to embark on a romance. So let's have a little look at who we can choose. So <laughs> she's 36. Now, <laughs> Colin, oh, Hubert. Hubert is a wonderful name. Hubert, oh, oh Hubert and Humphrey. These names are amazing. Um, who do you reckon she could try and, and shack up with? Graham, Andrew, Randolph. Oh, Randolph, 31, the single commoner. He's level three, so he's probably going to have some good stats about him. He has no charisma at all. Plus, his hair is terrible. Sorry, Randolph. <laughs> I'm singling you out on physical appearance, but your hair is not good enough. Um, who can we pick? Roland is level four. Oh, okay, Roland. You're not very strong. And you are wearing a weird bit of clothing, but you have got a nice necklace on. Um, you live in the London Harbour area. Um, okay, pick from world. Like, who does it narrow it down to? Oh, right, okay, so people here. So Carl is 18. He's level five. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, wow, hang on, right. Bring time down. Oh, there's a fight going on here. Oh, <laughs> is Carl just going to sort of stare? Is Carl a guard? Carl might be a guard. Oh. Oh, that's exciting. We could go and marry one of the guards. Uh, is there anyone else that's eligible round here? We could just shack up with Carl. Right, okay. I'm nominating you, Carl, because why not? Let's pick on you. <laughs> there we go. Right. So Carl is, is our nominated person. Let's see what she does. Does she run out and sort of talk to him now? I think she did. Yeah, there you go. Right. So she's going to run out this way. Kirsten's going to run over. Right. Put it on to 0 0.5 speed. Uh, there you go. Right. So Carl is going this way. Carl. Hello. This is Kirsten. Oh, that, oh it's, it's a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful success. OK, right. This is very exciting. Right. OK, Kirsten. <laughs> Kirsten. Right. Compliment somebody. Compliment Carl, the 18 year old single commoner um, who is half your age. My goodness. Right. OK, so go and confirm and let's give him a bunch of flowers which is it's nice. That's a lovely thing. Success. Marvellous. Right. OK, we can't do that. Oh, yeah, we can do it again. We can do it again straight away, can we? I don't think we could do that straight away. Maybe that thing has not quite kicked into life yet. So, right. Oh, there you go. Success. Oh, that was from the other success. This is more success. Now we can't do that for a little while. OK, can we sweet talk Carl? Let's go and whisper sweet nothings into Carl's ear. We've given him some flowers. Now she's whispering some stuff. My husband died of the plague, you know. Yeah, he's buried out in the back garden. What? Oh, no, success. <laughs> Carl likes hearing about that kind of stuff. OK. Um, uh, do we do we go for the kiss on the cheek? Oh, oh, they're very loved up. I mean, it's not taken very long, but I mean, yeah, time does move a bit quicker. Right. Confirm. Let's give Carl a little bit of a kiss on the cheek, a bit of a bit of smoochy, that kind of thing. Right. Does, does Carl like that? Carl was loving a little bit of smooching. Right, and now let let's um let's let's do this. Let's embark on a liaison. So I can embark on a liaison with you, Carl. Come here, Carl. There's no getting away from it. There's no getting away from it, my guardy friend. You're coming here. Me and you are gonna be an item. Kirsten and Carl forever. Kirsten and Carl sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Also, there's a person, Thomas is just <laughs> <laughs> lying here in a heap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How's it going? Success. Oh my goodness me. Okay, this this is a wonderful thing. This is brilliant. Okay, now Carl, can, can you now have a love affair? Carl shares your desire for, hang on, what was that? For a love affair between you both. Right, slow time down a little bit. Now what can we do here? Social activities. So we can embark on a romance. We can end it. Embark on a liaison, kiss on the cheek. So we can't sort of press Carl to go and marry us as such, because that's not how it works. In ye olde medieval times, we've got to wait for Carl, presumably, to come to us 
to ask for our hand in marriage. I think that's how it works. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Also, Colin, you might get mugged in a bit by Rowena the robber. Um, so yeah, maybe that's Colin the cook. I don't know. So let's see what happens here then. I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to function. Uh, we might need to wait for these things to sort of come down. Maybe we need to wait for those things to, to wear off, as it were. Okay, well, let, let's see what we can do. There's also diplomacy as well. Boast about your achievements. A church donation... Now, how do we do that? Because going to the church might take ages. Do you know what? Let's... Ah, there you go. No, we can just go over to this church. Let's just pop some money into the church. There we go. So she's going to run over there and put 200 monies into the church. That might be a fun thing to do. Right. The cockerel has crowed. It is four in the morning. <laughs> oh, my word. Everybody up, it's four in the morning. And now we're going to see what's going on. So we're going to give money to the church. So move time on nice and quick. I was going to say who's getting the XP, but yeah, it's um, it's it's Baldwin down the well. So give money to church. Yay, right, marvellous. And now, what can we do in here? Yeah, we can't embark on a liaison. We embark on a romance we don't want to do. We don't want to do that. Sweet talk. Right, hang on, how do we do this again? How can we yeah, select one of your lovers? Let's look at Carl. So this is Carl. He's, I mean, he is... He's a handsome slab of a gentleman right there. And he's, and he's a guard as well. He's got himself some mixed herbs for, for personal consumption, one assumes. So, I mean, what, what, how do we try and, how do we try and make him marry us? That, that's what we need to do now. We need to make this, maybe that number at the bottom needs to be at 100% and he will come knocking on our door for marriage. Possibly. I'm not entirely sure. Hang on, hang on. Something is going on over here. This is generally a bad thing. Um, oh no, that's our that's Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn's been beaten up by Aaron or Aaron the robber. Gwendolyn, run away. <laughs> Hang on, there's a guard. There is a guard coming in right now. Look, city guard has seen the villainy at work. The city guard is whacking the thief in the back of the head. And again, and again, guard man. Our, our humble peasant worker is being got. And boo. <laughs> <laughs> down goes the baddie well done the only thing is that does interrupt the trade route it does kind of interrupt the trade route she now doesn't know what to do so i have to go back in tier because yeah it breaks the route so yeah go back onto the wheaty cows market please okay uh, i should possibly check the business shouldn't i uh baldwin's getting water thomas is uh is is grow not growing thomas is growing cows um larissa is coming in to hopefully buy some of that stuff but possibly steal it i'm not entirely sure and um so yeah thomas cows baldwin water farley with the wheat it's all looking good it's all looking very encouraging indeed we've got 1666 money that has included the money we've spent on tamara to send her away to get an education so yeah things are looking pretty good things are looking pretty good right now um i wonder how can we do other stuff building activities Repair the... Okay, yeah. Do we need to repair our building? How tight is our building? 83% for our building. It might be worth repairing it. 167. Yeah, let's repair the building. And also, should we treat ourselves to an add-on? Building security. That might be a fun thing to have. What's that? Customer something. What's that? Customer satisfaction. That might be good. That's going to be good for our influence. Because people are going to go, yes, it's a very good place to go. Privacy protection. We've got... Yes, we can't get all of these things. Front store slot's not so bothered. Yeah, let's, should we get customer satisfaction? We'll get that. We'll pay a little bit for that. And we'll pay a bit for building security. And, you know, and fire protection. Let's spend some money on the business. This is what's making us our coin. This is what's making us our coin. So we might as well try and make it as good as it can be. Right, I have sent Kirsten off to try and find Carl. I don't really know where Carl is. He's he's around somewhere, but I've sent her off to whisper sweet nothings into his ear. I mean, this might take <laughs> this might be a very very long way round of of whispering some naughty things in somebody's ear. But she's going for it. She's running off. I can't quite work out where he is, but never mind. Oh, also, I was going to say there's a baddie there, but the ba oh no, <laughs> oh no, and it's happened immediately. Kirsten is being got. And she's using her dagger. This is good. He is he is a little bit... He's a bit brutish. Oh, look at that, though. Minus 41 health on Herbert the Robber. However, he did block one of her attacks, which is unfortunate. But yeah, he is taking some good damage. Oh, he is... Oh, he is going down. 
He is going down. Yes, you've blocked Kirsten. Well done. And Herbert is nearly gone. One more good hit on Herbert and he will be on the ground. And we won the fight. Take that, Herbert. Have that, you swine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, okay. What's that? Dynastic trade. I don't know what that is. Or declare a feud with somebody. Oh, this thing here. We can find somebody to try and trade with them. And rather than doing it for money, we can do it for stuff. You offer something of yours and ask for something in return. Money, a building, their daughter's hand. Anything is possible. Oh, that's very interesting. Right, clear those things. Oh, I'm glad she won that. See, it was a good idea to arm Kirsten. Oh, hang on. And I think she's found Carl. Oh, and that did not work. Carl has spurned her advances. Oh, no, Carl, you scoundrel. Um, Let's compliment him. Let's compliment Carl. Let's see if that works. So back to normal speed. We've got to get that back up. We've got to get that back up. Oh, is it because she's lost a point of charisma? Oh, we didn't wash her, did we? She didn't have a wash beforehand. Okay, right, what can we do now? We could go and give him a kiss on the cheek. However, what we're going to do is, do you have your... Oh, you've only got your bouquet of flowers. I didn't put the things on you. I didn't bring the washcloths. And now you're a gazillion miles away <laughs> from your house. Right, never mind. We're going to go for this. We're going to go for a little kiss on the cheek with Carl to see if we can get that number up. Now, I don't know what that number is. I'm not entirely sure what that number is. It's not It's not really clear. I assume it's how well they're getting on. Now, how is this going to go? That's not really giving a kiss on the cheek. That's pointing a dagger at him, which he might not like quite so much, but okay. Right, we've done that. Um, okay, we can't do any of these things. We can't do any of these things. We don't want to end it. Uh, we don't want to embark on a romance. Embark on a liaison. Pick a person you want to start a liaison with. We have no romances. Um, okay. How do we how do we make you marry us? Embark on a romance is just with lots of people. Carl, Carl, I would like pl please propose to me. I demand it. In this time of time of you know, the world, you have to propose to me because that's how it worked back then. Let's just see what we can do. Let's see if we can bring that number up. If we compliment him. That's now at 82. So if we go, yes, go and compliment Carl, and then we'll see what happens. Does that number go up? Do we need to get it to 100, maybe, for him to want to marry us? I do not know. Oh, there you go, Carl. Let me point this dagger at your heart again. <laughs> the daft romantic that I am. Right, he's got some flowers, which means he's happy. Oh, I don't know. This is going to be a pain as well with our with our daughter as well. This is going to be a bit of a pain with Tamara because she obviously can't propose to people. She can't propose. So we're going to have to wait for people to come and marry her, are we? I'm not entirely sure. Also, what are you doing, Aldrich Alcott? Are you doing something slightly naughty? As a crazy tax collecting evil bird face goes by. Um, Yeah, are you, are you chucking stones? I don't know if you're chucking stones. Okay, I'm not entirely sure. Right, Kirsten, let's head back home. Let's head back home, wherever that might be. I'm completely lost. Oh, Kirsten, you're very far away. Um, yeah, okay. Pop back home, Kirsten. And Kirsten is under attack again on the way back. She's under attack once more. The only thing is, she's not recovered from her previous trial. So she is quite low on hit points. However, Hubert the robber, wasn't the other person called Hubert? I can't remember. But he is also going down. But I think the next hit is going to finish whoever off. I think Kirsten might... Oh, no, we won the fight. <laughs> Yay. Okay, marvellous. Kirsten, um, you might need to go and get yourself healed, possibly. That might be what you're doing now. I'm not entirely sure. Are you heading home? Are you heading over to the big... Sm yeah, you're heading over into London. That's fine. So she's going to go and get herself healed. Again, I rather suspect. <laughs> it just keeps happening. Get wounds healed. Go to the pest house, the lusty leech. Now, again, somebody in the comments pointed out, I didn't realise this, that a pest house, apparently, is um is is a place where they treat, like, plague victims or something like that. So no wonder that Bernard got the plague from going to a house where they will keep poorly people. But there we go, never mind. Right, so Kirsten can run off there because she's quite badly wounded because she keeps getting got. However, I'm quite happy that we gave her a dagger. I'm pretty happy that she's got at least some method of defending herself. And it's worked so far. I think there's been another fight. I think there's been another fight. This robber here, so uh, Brigid, decided, I think, to attack Baldwin. 
And I think Baldwin was supported by the city guard. And then down here, Bridget is just, <laughs> just lying in a sort of crumpled heap. But there you go. Okay, we're doing okay with fights. It might be a good idea to possibly equip all of our people. Is that a fire? Oh, no, right. It's a, it's, a, it's a campfire. I thought the building was on fire, but no, that's fine. So, yeah, it might be a good idea to equip all of our people with at least just a basic dagger. Just a bit of a stabby, stabby weapon to at least give them a little bit of an edge when it comes to fights. I do like this. I like how the world changes depending on what's going on around it. So this here is a lumber yard. It's called Busy Beavers, which is a good pun. But all around here, the trees are cut down, as you would expect from a lumber yard, because they would go and cut down the trees and then turn them into boards or whatever. I quite like the fact that this area here has become deforested. So, you know, there's tree stumps, and there's animals roaming around and little bits of vegetation, but the big forest is no longer there. And you've got yourself some sort of piles of logs here and over here, and there's a, I don't know what that is, like a collapsed, is that an old collapsed building or something hidden away in there? So I like that. I like the fact that it does change. It's not just like there's a lumber yard, it just gets lumber from nowhere. You know, it just gets magic lumber coming in and nothing falls down. The trees are actually being cut down, which I didn't expect from this game, if I'm completely honest. So yes, I'm very impressed by this. And... It looks, I was going to say it looks pretty. It's obviously not pretty to see, to see swathes of deforestation, but it looks good. I like the fact that it adds that nice extra touch of realism. Just checking in on Tamara. This is where she's spending her time in the London schools. Yeah, she's right in the heart of it. She's in front of the big kind of big church cathedral thing just there. And she's near the big castle just there. So she's in a very, very good place. Hopefully this will pay off. Now I imagine... Maybe next time on the next day she'll come out of school. I do not know. Not entirely sure. But there we go. Right, let's try and find out where where Kirsten is as well. Okay, right. She's still running in to get healed. She's still running in to get healed. Goodness me. Okay, this takes quite a long time. I wonder if there's something we can buy to actually speed up this process. Because that is... That's quite slow. <laughs> that's quite slow. Right. So there we go. We spent a bit of money. Oh, hang on a minute. Now she just stood about doing nothing. Right, Kirsten, now head home. Somebody likes me. In the marketplace, you noted that Corwin Bannister's trousers are not, are not as appropriately buttoned as they should be. Okay. Uh, thanks to a discreet hint, the Bannister family is spared an embarrassing situation, which increases your standing and favour with them. Okay. <laughs> right. I see. Like that, is it? Right, Kirsten, can you do anything? To, to poor Carl there. Not really. Let's just go. Let's go back and see Carl. And we'll give him some more flowers. Oh, and the weather is certainly becoming slightly inclement. It's uh, it's settling on the ground, which I do think looks very impressive. It's all very nice and gradual. But um, yeah, it's snowing. A severe snowstorm is raging in the area. The diplomacy status of other dynasties. The diplomacy status between the Barclay and Olcott dynasties is now hostile. I thought the Barclay dynasty had died out. I thought we got a little note at the top saying the Barclay dynasty was no more. But okay, right, well, whatever the case, maybe one of them survived somewhere and they're now hostile. Marvellous. One thing I'm not entirely sure on in this game is if the weather actually has any bearing on in-game things. So, for example, right now, it's snowing. And it's snowing quite hard. Everything has gone white. It's all very, very pretty and lovely. But we run a farm. And to the best of my farming knowledge, I'm no farmer, but I'm pretty sure that it's quite hard to grow crops when the ground is covered in snow because the ground will be hard and the crops will be covered with snow and it probably isn't very good for them. So I wonder if in this particular weather situation we're in, where it is very snowy, I wonder if it's harder to grow wheat and harder to grow barley. I wonder if that bar goes up slower. I have no idea. I'm not entirely sure. And I mean, this has completely stopped now because it's late and everyone's gone home. You know, the working day is done. So yeah, we won't find out from now, but we might be able to find out tomorrow if it's still snowing. We could have a look to see if that goes up any slower. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Something in my head says it probably won't do, but it might do at some point. Oh, oh, a family member is under attack and there's a flashy thing going on just here as well. Right, who who is attacking us? Who is attacking us? Um, who is attacking us? Carl! Carl is here! Carl isn't our family member, is he? No, Kirsten is here. Oh, poor Kirsten's just been constantly victimised. But there's two people pouncing on us. Who are you guys, then? You are from... You're from a dynasty. Is that why that thing flashed on? You're from this dynasty. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, right, yeah, one of the dynasties has entirely gone. Because we started with ten, I think. So now we're down to just... We're down to nine... 
but this dynasty is not doing very well at all. They've got like, what's that thing? Is that our relationships with them? Yeah, that's our relationships with them. Oh, okay, fine. Right, I thought that was their sort of current status. No, that's our relationships with them. So the Barclay dynasty, which I thought had gone, or maybe it was just the leader was gone, possibly. Um, their baddies, they're all baddies. They've got robber camps and all sorts of terrible stuff. And their house is called Home Stinky Home. <laughs> really? So, um, yeah, they're, these aren't nice, but they are attacking us, which is why that thing came up to say, look, the dynasty. There's a dynasty attack. So Kirsten is fighting. Carl is also fighting. Carl looks to have taken a bit of a punch there. Oh, Carl might be struggling. Oh no, Carl. Oh, this could be bad. Um, Eric the robber is having a go at Kirsten. Kirsten is on full health. Kirsten is taking no messing. Kirsten is not taking any, any mess from anybody. She's, she's a little bit sick and tired of being attacked. She's fed up of this, but... He is not taking a lot of damage. He's not taking a lot of damage. That when he just blocked her attack, that is a bad state of affairs. That means we're going to take a bit of damage, and they're not. A family feud has started uh, between the Calvert and the Olcots. Um, oh yeah, hostile. Right. Okay, so they're all fighting. Okay, bring time back down to slow. Eric the robber is not looking great. Kirsten is looking pretty good. Kirsten's very handy. Carl is not looking particularly happy with life. He's not got very many hit points. Is Kirsten going to have to sort them both out? <laughs> sort out both the baddies. Go on, Kirsten. Right. We won that fight. So I think he's gone down. Right, Kirsten, do you need to go and help Carl? Or is Carl just being attacked in a completely separate kind of incident? I think maybe Carl is just also being beaten up. Right, go on, Carl. One good hit. One good uppercut. Boom, into his middle. And marvellous news. Okay. <laughs> and now that's happened, we can go to winter in the year 1428. Marvellous. Right, Carl has got a bit older. Kirsten is now 40 years old. And these guys are still lying in the snow. Marvellous. Okay. Right, Kirsten. Um, right, what can you do? So you can't do any of this stuff. How do we make you eligible for marriage? I notice there's a thing here that says no heir. If you have children, you can name one of them as your heir. To do this, open the family tree. I thought it would have been fairly obvious that we would have Tamara as the heir. You have to select a living member of your family to appoint as a new heir. Well, I would like to pick you, please, because she's alive. Okay, unless I can't pick a girl. Because we are in ye olde medieval times. And, you know, nowadays it sounds a little bit ridiculous. But back in those days, you know, girls were not as good in terms of dynasties and things as boys. And maybe that's why I can't do that tomorrow. Oh, hang on a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow time down. Tamara's finished school. Tamara is a, as a person of her own right. And, ah, Tamara can propose marriage to somebody else. Okay, right. That is... That is wonderful news. Right, first things first. Right, Tamara. Tamara, you need to go and get yourself some flowers. <laughs> you need to go and get yourself some flowers. So, Tamara, come home from school. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay, so you didn't get any experience points. I thought you were going to. Right, Tamara is the head of the family. She's 18. She is single. She is a commoner. Now, we could... I think, let's give Tamara a little treat. You've been at school for ages. You've been at school for a long time. You've done lots of clever stuff. Come back home for now. That would be nice. Do you want Tamara Cupboard to abort, sent to school to start another task? Is she still at school? Oh, she's not finished yet. We actually graduate, so we'll receive experience points and a permanent improvement. Oh, right. Oh, okay, right. She's still at school. Oh, right, okay. I, I, I thought she'd kind of finished because she had all those stats. Okay, right. Kirsten's running home. Uh, to her empty house still, because Carl does not want to reciprocate her affections, really. Carl's just uh, flattered, but he doesn't want to actually... Yeah, he doesn't want to commit to marriage, Carl, you scallywag. So I think what we'll do is we shall finish this particular part by giving ourselves the title of yeoman. So we've, we've, we've dragged the family up from surf. Bernard got us to a commoner, and now Kirsten and Tamara... I mean, Tamara's learning, so Kirsten and Co. really have got us to the status of yeomans. So we can uh, we can throw stones and we can ask a favour. Two slightly obscure things, but yeah, let's claim this title. We are now... Oh, we're a... <laughs> we're a yeowoman. Because, of course, it's Tamara. So Tamara is a yeowoman. And that means we can unlock other things, which is very exciting. So we could, if we want to, go down a miller's trade. That means we'll unlock a windmill... 
and we'll be able to make barley flour and wheat flour. Now in the long run, yeah, and then we can make grain as well if we unlock Miller's Trade too. But then if we become a yeoman, which is, I know we're already a yeoman. That's brilliant. Hang on, that's a little bit obscure. A yeoman, I know that's a yeoman as well. Okay, that's lovely. So if we're a yeoman, we can then also spend money. We could get that, Miller's Trade for 1500. We could get a baker for 1500 and then have a little bakehouse which I do like the idea of, but my main goal is to get down here. I want this. I want to be able to become a butcher because then I want to go to here. I want to have a little public house. I want to open a pub because that serves alcohol and weak beer and sausages. And what more could you want from life than that in a public house? So for that, we would need to get ourselves uh, a resident, which is 3,400 monies. That would allow us to open up a butcher which might be quite a good idea. So we get a butchery. So we need to get 3,400 to be a resident. We'd need to get ourselves 2,000 to earn butcher one. So what's that? That's that's quite a lot of money. That's 5,400. And then to come down here to get hospitality one, we need to go to a citizen, which is 5,100 and some influence as well. Oh my goodness me. All right, it's quite hard to get here. But... Oh, oh, when you're a citizen, you get all sorts of very exciting things. Oh, that's very good. You get a citizen house. Does that mean we can live in the city? Maybe that means we can live in the city. Oh, this is very exciting. This is very exciting indeed. So we need a bit more money, which we do earn quite a lot of. We had 5,000 of it to send thing above to school. So we're doing okay with money. Uh, but yeah, maybe we want to invest in another thing to make some more to make some more money. Another little farm, another croft possibly. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Do we go down? And we can't do that because that's a patrician. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, you need to go all the way down to here to be able to get to Agriculture 3, which also lets us upgrade our little croft building as well. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do and a lot of money to acquire. But I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to save the money. It might be nice going down here and make lovely little things, make honey and bread rolls. But really, we want to go down here. We want people to be drinking beer in the cupboard taverns. And we shall do that, if possible, next time out. Because we're going to wrap it up for now. An awful lot's happened. Mostly fights, <laughs> I'll be honest. Mostly lots of fighting. But Kirsten has, has come through very well. Kirsten has done a very good job. We've equipped her. She is now a bit of a fighting force, is Kirsten. She's not to be trifled with. She's taken down all those who have tried to attack her now. And she's doing very, very well. So we'll see what happens with her next time. We also need to see what happens with Tamara next time because we want her to finish her schooling because she's still there. She's still there. Even though she's got all the options down here, she is still at school and we spent quite a lot of money on that. So we want to make sure that we get the benefits from that. So she'll get 900 XP and 250 influence, which is useful for some of the things that we've seen that we need you know, to uh, level up and stuff later on through our titles down here. If we want to become citizens and stuff like that, that costs influence now. So that can be quite useful as well. And then, yeah, we just want to continue on with what we're doing and see if we can stay alive and see if the Cupboard Dynasty can continue and eventually get to the point where we have more than two people in the family. Because this does make me a little bit nervous. I mean, yeah, they could just get the plague and die at any point. So hopefully we will be able to see more cupboard people in the next part, or maybe the part after that, if we get that far. But of course, that requires us to finish up for now. Hopefully you are still enjoying this, if you are, which I really hope you are, because this is very, very enjoyable to play. It's just kind of all sorts of silly and daft, and I love it. So if you're enjoying it, then please do leave a like. That would be very, very splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how the Cupboard Dynasty gets on here in the Guild 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Let's follow Matt Spence, aka Duke Nukem, as he chases after a dirty villain. There are a lot of angry people still, and I don't know why. Never ever employ him, he's terrible. This place is full of rats. Timothy Robles with your kind of crazy eyes. You have tea leaves in one of my shops. <laughs>